Joining me today is Dr. Kira Hudson-Banks, who is an assistant professor at St. Louis University's Department of Psychology. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So how should we think about race? So I think it's important that we think about race as a social construct. Um, it's something that we've created in our society in terms of the meaning that it has um, and that we really realize that it's, it's something that we have developed um, ideas about and that in reality we see it but we don't see it. So we think we see race but we really don't see race. We see what we've created in terms of opportunities and access around race. So for example, the Human Genome Project has shown us that we are more alike than we are different, right? So we know DNA, based on our DNA, that we are more different actually within what we have created as, uh, racial groups, right? We're di more different within our racial groups than we are across our racial groups. And so I think it's important that we understand that. The paradox is that even though we can say race isn't real, it's the social thing that we've created, that it has real consequences. Well, you've heard people say, I'm colorblind implying right. that they don't see any differences. Right. What do you think of that? Well, it's, I, I think it's important to problematize the idea of colorblindness, right? And because if, if we can understand that race matters for things like infant mortality, access to education, access to healthy food, life expectancy, um, those things shouldn't matter on the basis of race if race isn't real, right? But if we've constructed opportunities, access, outcomes, based on race, then those become real. And so to say that you're colorblind is really to minimize the reality of how race impacts people's life experiences. And I understand people want to say, well, didn't Dr. King tell us to be colorblind? And, and in actuality, if we think about his words, he, he didn't say that. He said he wants people to be judged by the content of their character, not the color of their skin. He didn't say, don't see the skin, right? He didn't want us to be judged on the basis of it, but he didn't say, let's ignore it. And so it's, I think it's important for people to realize that sometimes when you say, I'm colorblind, I don't see race, or I don't see color, I didn't notice that you were a person of a different race, I just think of you as a person, that that can be minimizing to how they experience the world or how the world responds to them. But if a person says that, they think they don't have any biases. Are you saying, really, we might have biases that we're just not acknowledging? I am saying that we all have biases and that we have to acknowledge them in order to move forward. And so saying, I don't have a prejudice bone in my body is inaccurate because we all have biases. Um, one of the researchers that I respect highly, Dr. Beverly Daniel Tatum, in her book, Why All the Black Kids Sitting Together in the Cafeteria, which is a great read, I would suggest it, um, talks about uh, it being racism, the negative stories we learn about different racial groups, uh, unconscious bias, being like